How you doing? I'm Joe Plowman from Plowman's Windows and Doors in Millville. We're on 118 East Vine Street. Uh, we have a full-size showroom there. Today we're making a video basically to show you how we install windows in old homes in what we refer to as new construction style. We're doing a house here where you're going to see a whole video on the process of removing your siding. Once the siding's down and marked, they're going to take the window out. We cut back the jams, tape the windows up, Tyvek, back seal these windows, and everything has to go back onto the house after it's done. Uh, this is not a typical installation. The typical installation is a house that's got wooden double hungs in it where you see the guys remove the sashes, cap the frame, and pop the windows in. This is a lot more detailed and a lot of people are not aware of the difference between putting these in these homes this way versus what they call refer to as pocket sleeving. Pocket sleeving is removing your window, sliding a window in, bend a piece of metal to hide it, and go. That is not the proper way to put a window in as far as I'm concerned. BF Rich has a whole process we have to follow on the installation of these windows in order to give you the warranties they give you. They give you a lifetime warranty on every part of their window, every piece, for as long as you own the home, under normal wear and tear, and of course, it doesn't cover trees falling on your house or fires. The screen also only has a normal wear and tear screen effect to it. It's not, they're gonna give you new screens for life. But that's the least of the problems with these, with these windows today. Um, we spent a lot of time today making up a video for you and I hope you enjoy it. What we're doing on this house here is we're actually removing the siding. These windows were put in new construction when the house was built. A lot of guys do what they call a pocket sleeve. They don't remove the windows. And they cut them out of the channels and they slide them out. They're going to letter each piece of siding. They marked every piece on the wall so it can go back exactly where it came from. And to get a general idea is this is actually what it looked like before they start. You can see all the sidings on the window. And what most companies will do is they come in here and they cut this free of the channels and they slide the window out. This is giving you a smaller window and an opening. They also do not cut the drywall on the inside, which you can actually see when he takes this out, you're gonna see the drywall on this window. We're gonna give you a shot of the drywall before it's cut, after it's cut, and while the guy's cutting it. This adds a lot of extra work to the job. This is gonna make it better than what was being built. But uh, there's a certain way to tie that goes on. There's a certain way the taping goes on and uh, it gives you a very nice job and these windows will not leak like this. You're going to see as he takes this channel off where the Tyvek paper is. The Tyvek paper is cut around the window. And if you're not really familiar with construction, you can see right here, there's the end of the Tyvek. And what they do to make people happy is they put tar paper around the window first, they put the window in. The problem comes into most guys will channel the window or the window's got a built-on channel, then they run the Tyvek over. Well, that protects the sides and the top, but at the bottom, this piece is actually behind the Tyvek, so the water runs down behind your house. The house, in my personal opinion, should be Tyvek completely first. We will show you that on another window when we go around, and uh, this, is the, this is the biggest problem you have here. I have houses that it's not like this. This piece is actually done this way, and then what happens, the water goes behind everything, and it starts to rot the home. They're actually cutting the Tyvek paper away from the window now that was on top of it. Once that window's out, that all gets taken care of as the new window goes in. There's a whole process to that. And they're going to remove the aluminum window. This house happens to have aluminum windows in it. Some of them have vinyl. We do the same process whether it's aluminum or vinyl. And you can notice these are also what they call a single hung window. They're in all the developments out here. The top sashes don't move. The bottoms are the movers. We're going to be putting back a double hung through BF Rich. And uh, it's a vintage window, new construction, built-in J-channel and nail fin. And it has a lifetime warranty. Every part, every piece of that window for as long as you own the home. They go two years free service on the window. The rest is an exchange deal. Okay, at this point you can see the window's been removed. This one it actually, uh, they actually had some insulation around this one. There wasn't a whole lot of nails. You can see they did wrap tar paper around the opening of the window. That's about this big before they did their windows and then they put their Tyvek on. 
What you see here is a windowsill, and on that windowsill, we just got about an inch and an eighth space here. We have to cut the sill back, and you can see on the sides here, you can see the drywall return to the window. Same distance, we actually have to cut all this back, cut the top back, and this window will fit the same size as the window that came out. This is not being put in any smaller than the original windows. Before they put that in, there's a whole step of processing they got to do to this opening. When this window gets done, it'll be sealed as tight as it possibly can. Notice the tie back to it, the top is pulled up. That's the last thing that will come down once everything's done because water goes downhill. Everything has to lap one on top of the other. And uh, that's what secures this. This window will probably never have a chance of leaking water due to the soffits over top of it. But a two-story house, that's really important. We're showing you here, basically, this is one of the original windows before it was touched as far as siding. This is basically a before shot, so you can actually see the window. You can see the J channels on the window. This is about to be stripped for you. And up above, yesterday, they did some of the twins up top. You can see the difference in the two windows, one the aluminum, second versus the vinyl and beige. And that has its own built-in channels on it. So that's just comparison. Okay, what he's doing now is he's using a siding unlocking tool and he's unlocking the siding. You got to at least unlock a row above the window in order to get the window out. Okay, the other thing you notice is when we refer to dropping the siding, as we go around the house, we don't drop the whole wall unless we have to. This is where he's going to start now. They're going to start on nailing the panels, drawing, marking, labeling. Everything that comes off goes back exactly where it came from. So if you had the misfortune of having your siding misinstalled, I can't fix it unless you provide all new siding for the entire house. But if you liked how it looked before, it'll look the same when it's done. Now if you notice, they move along at a pretty fast pace as far as doing this. I've been doing construction work for over 40 years now, and the fact that we've been doing windows and doors basically strictly since 1990, we consider ourselves one of the experts in this field. Uh, very few guys do nothing but windows and doors for a living. This is exactly what we do, five days a week. And uh, there's nothing we haven't taken apart and, uh, out here, out, especially out in these different developments. Um, we actually do uh, custom installations where you wouldn't have had a window before. We do the same process, drop the siding, do all the framing to the outside, and the last thing we do is cut the drywall on the inside. Um, it makes a nice, quick, clean installation of the product, but you have to have been able to do it a few times. Anytime you try to do something the first time or a homeowner on this, it can become very hard, even though everybody tells you it's simple. It looks simple. Waha! Well, what happened to the Tyvek? <laughs> well, I guess we ran out that day. <laughs> As you can see, that's the first time the panel's been off the house and there's a bare spot. And actually, you know what they did? They probably had that frame for a patio door. Yep. Okay, now that you've seen the process, basically we, how we remove the siding and we start taking windows out, this particular window's out. And what he's doing is he's remarking the silt, the seat board, and he's going to mark the side jams in the top of this, and then it's got to be all cut. We don't cut this back and the window is going to stick out of your house too far. So, and once this process is done and that window's in, it'll be the same as if your house was just built and everything's sealed in and fit it nice and tight. You're watching a measure from the window to the siding and he puts the other window and he wants the other window to wind up right back where that window is so we don't have a problem with siding not fitting when we're done. That's the only reason why that measurement's been taken. But this part now, as you can see, the window's out. He's making sure everything around the opening is smooth. And this part now is waiting for the cutting of the drywall and the sills. And what they're doing now is they're actually putting a window wrap tape around this window. And what this is is just in case any water gets behind the nail flange or something like that, it's supposed to run out of there. Um, this tape will never have any chance of having any water touched, but you'll see in the next couple steps of when we put this window in. Today it's fairly warm out. Um, when it's cold out, this is a lot of fun. 
Um, he has a heat gun there. He's going to heat this up a little bit too. In the winter time, we actually tack it on with a staple gun, and then we take a heat gun and we heat it. If not, you're there forever trying to put this on. This is uh, basically this whole process is the proper way to put windows in. It's on a lot, a lot of information you can get on proper installation of a window. A lot of people misunderstand this process. This is what you're seeing is the Tyvek is under the tape. Okay, and the tape is on top. Remember, water goes downhill, and we're going to show you more of that as this process is done. Some people do the taping of the wall, put the Tyvek over it, and it's wrong. This is the way we do it, and we feel this is right. And uh, he's going to heat it up now, but basically that's all that's done with it. Notice how far it goes past the window. And when they put the next piece of tape on, it'll start here, and it'll go up, and it'll pass the top. And then the final piece goes on after the window's in. Well, actually, the side pieces go on after the window's in, too. But this is what you go through on these jobs. This stuff is not cheap to use, okay? This adds more to the cost of your installation. The labor, he put that on pretty quick. He has three more pieces to go. So each one's a little bit longer to put them on. Okay, this next step that you see, he's actually heating this up. It's a fairly warm day today, but to make sure we're making a good solid contact to the window, I don't think you're gonna find too many guys to take the time to heat this tape up. Um, but it, when George is done with this thing, we got a really nice, tight, secure, dry fit there. Okay, we're now onto a different window and you can see the tape is on this window and we have a nail sticking out right here. You're gonna want to beat that in before. Uh... We have to check these real careful. He's actually got a small shim that he actually puts in the corner of each window. We want our windows to float in the middle. These boards can warp and they push up on the windows. This actually gives us some room. If something happens later, we can actually unnail the window and pull it down. He's applying silicone to the side jams. And now he's doing the head. And it's not a lot, and all the purpose of that is he's gonna actually put some insulation around there. And that's because we can't get back inside of these windows after they're in, because the drywall returns here, or in some houses, this is actually a wood jam. Okay, this is very typical to a wood frame opening. When we do masonry or brick, we use a uh, process with, called backer rod, which is a closed cell foam that can't conduct any moisture to it. You really can't run fiberglass against concrete. And she's prepped. Okay, he's now he's applying uh, silicone around the nail flange of this window. He goes completely around the window with this. This is a factory fused nail fin. This is not an applied nail fin. And uh, he's also going to do an inner seal that helps with the insulation once he gets his bead all the way around. That's pure clear silicone he's putting on there. Um, and again, the cost in a tube of that versus the cost of caulk is different. So again, a lot of guys won't use the silicone on it, they'll use a caulk. Now he's going to basically take care of doing the inner part of the frame. And this is more or less for where the window makes contact to that strip of insulation that was put in there. That is not to seal anything else except for to contact the insulation. And he's only got a few minutes once this is process is done on this window to actually get this into the opening. And uh, I would actually tell you once this is done all the way around and this window is fastened into the home, that if you were later on to try to take this out, this gives you a fight. Okay, now you can see they're pushing the window into the opening and he's making sure that the insulation that he put the silicone around the window is actually being stayed into the jam by pushing it back on the inside. Okay. Up. Now he actually has got that thing sitting there and the silicone will pretty much hold that window where, it, where it's at, but you still want to hang on to it. Five and five eighths, I had eleven. Got the window. Oh. Pull that in. Pull that in. 
713. They got to do is they got guide marks on that window. What they're doing is they're re-putting that window back and centering it back where the other window was. 715. You can actually see the mark here. Straight they in. always mark so far away from the window when they take it out so that when they go back, this is centered right Good. back where it belongs. He just put the first screw into that. Um, this is another process when we do these. We like to actually screw the windows in. You have a J channel, built in J channel on this, and this is factory applied. And if you happen to hit this with a hammer, there's a chance you could chip it or break it. Okay, the screws also allow them to remove the window, readjust the window until that seal dries. And what he's doing now is he's actually closing the window down and he's squaring the window within its own frame. There you go, boy, bro. Yeah, bud. 7 and 15. 7 and 15. Check the level and then we'll do it. And now they're leveling the side jam to try to see, make sure it's back where it belongs. Top screw goes in. You notice the first thing he did was the two bottom sides, two top sides. Middle's next, double check it. Straight in. Now he's guiding the whole side of the window by the centers on both sides of the window. Good. Uh, looks good. Go ahead. Now what he's looking for is a dead even space at the top and a dead even space at the bottom. You can put in the most level window in a house and if those spaces aren't right, you're gonna leak air. The other thing he did by pulling this in was making sure inside the daylight space down the side of the sash was right. The center again, so it's corner, 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 center of the windows, center top, center bottom. You can't just put screws or nails around a window. It's, you gotta work them. He will place a screw in every one of these holes around the window. Every hole has to be done according to manufacturer specification. Notice that the Tyvek is still up on the top of the window. The Tyvek and his tape is behind the window. And uh, once this whole process is finished off with the tape, which we're going to get working on that once they finish up with this window, you'll see how they pull that down. You always got to think, I keep saying it, is rain, water, water, downhill. Everything overlaps each other all the way down. It's even on top of the bottom flange of this window. Yeah. Okay, we're getting ready to cut this window. I'm going to uh, get completely out of the way. This is the main process to the window because our windows do come in approximately. This one here looks like about seven eighths of an inch. And uh, if you don't cut that back, you're not going to have a good fit on the window. So I will run past you and you can videotape these guys cutting that out of there.
You can show them the thickness of that board now, both directions. And you can see how thick the board is he just took out of there. This takes a little patience to do. The next part is he's going to cut the drywall. And there's three sections of drywall to cut, the two sides and the top. Okay, he's taking one side off and you can see about how much of the drywall had to be removed. And again, this is why guys don't like doing this type of installation. They'll do a pocket sleeve. They will actually slide that window in further than that, not cutting anything and making your window smaller than the actual window was that came out. And I am not a fan of doing that. I don't believe it should be done. Okay, you notice it basically it was two guys cutting on this window. One guy was using a vibrating uh, blade and a fiend saw, and the other guy's running a vacuum. And the vacuum, hey, we didn't have to run that, but then the whole house would have been full of dust. And uh, as you can see, he went around the opening one more time, and he actually vacuumed off the 2x4 and the sheathing and the drywall. So when uh, Wes comes along and puts the seal on there to hold the insulation, it doesn't just fall off on you. But this, now you're looking at the basic preparation of this window. This is why you pay a little bit more money for this type of an installation. You can see you got to peel the back off the tape. Five inches above. All right, and he's higher than the window at the time. At the time this is going on, you can see this process. And again, this is the way BF Rich wants their windows installed when you put them in new construction. And again, this house was already built, so we're actually replacing the windows with a new construction window. These windows were custom made for this house. These aren't stock windows that you just pick up off a shelf. And again, we're heating it up to make sure we got a good contact. And you can see he's up top and he's even onto the wood. That top piece of Tyvek will stay up in the air until we get all the tape on the window, and then that's pulled down. on top of that siding lip. Yeah, whenever the siding's close to the bottom of the window, we always try to get over that lip rather than cut it before it. And if you look at what you've seen so far, you've seen the prep of the opening. You've seen them seal and put insulation in. You've seen them back seal the vinyl window and screw it in place. You've seen the tape applied and the tape now. Basically, if you're looking at this, there's no way you're getting air through this. It's just not gonna happen. Most guys put windows in and they, they nail them in or screw them in. There's no seal behind it, there's no tape, there's no nothing. You now you notice the top one's going on across the top of the window. It's going to overlap both the sides and the Tyvek is still up in the air on the top. Everything's gone downhill again. Tapes on top of tape on top of tape. If you got water behind this window, it has to run down. It has to get out. It's not going to go behind anything that's put up there. You're probably looking at that figuring, okay, he's almost done with the top of this window. Pull the paper down and you're done, and that's, that's not it. It's not finished. There's another step that has to be done. And now you noticed he taped the corner cuts on there, and again, it's tape on top of tape, paper, water's going to run downhill. I keep saying that. This is the most important part of these windows or any window that's put in your house is to make sure the water's not going behind them. And the Tyvek now is on top of the, of the window wrap. So again, you got water running downhill. And we're going to tape off the two corners on this. And then it's done.
Okay, that'll be nailed back once the siding's getting ready to go back on her, but that's going to ensure we don't get any water behind these windows. We're under an overhang or a porch. It doesn't matter if it's under the overhang or it's out in an A. This is the process we have to do when we install BF Rich vinyl windows. This window is a vintage. This window is a very really highly rated window. It's got a DP pressure of 50 on it. This is going to perform for years. It's got a lifetime warranty on every part of this window. The frame, the glass, not the screen. The screens wear out. The locks and all the hardware. For two years, BF Rich will service that window for free. If we put them in, we basically do free service on that window for life. You will pay a $25 paperwork charge or according to the year, what year it's moving into, it may go up a little bit. But that's just to process everything out. You notice they're cutting the top of this window now, and if you stare at it, you'll see there's two layers of drywall. All the other windows we did, we had one. This is done usually because they make the opening too big for the window that's going in. I can't make these windows bigger than the rest just because they altered the framing. We actually have to make the window fit back within this opening. Now he's cutting the second piece out, and he's really happy that that's not a pine jam or a cherry jam he's trying to cut right now. Okay, you're getting to see them uh, finish these windows up with the siding. All the siding is the original siding that's gone back. Everything's gone back on on the marks that are, were there from the original siding. And uh, you got this row here and one more row to do. And uh, this is finished up. The last thing they'll do is wipe this down. And it's finished outside cleaning the glass. The glass gets cleaned, the stickers are removed and given to the homeowner, and then the inside gets sealed to the drywall. Good over there? Yeah, man. Yep. Now this is one part of this house here where the siding doesn't go behind the soffits. It's actually going into a piece of under the sill trim. It's got like little beaks on the top that'll snap in. Once that's snapped in and they actually clean the siding up, we'll seal that in place so it can't come out. There's no nails for this one. Okay, we want to thank you for watching this video we made today. Again, we're Plowman's Windows and Doors, located at 118 East Vine Street in Millville. Our store hours are Monday through Friday. We're 8 to 5, Saturdays 9 to 1. We do make nighttime appointments, which you can call. Uh, we have a full-size showroom there for you. It's staffed real well. We have three people in the showroom at all times. Uh, stop by, just go in there and check out the windows. You can operate them. They're all full-size. We go out to your house, we don't do any obligation to come out and measure your windows. We come out, measure, leave, and your prices are called back into you. We don't do any in-home contracts. We make your shopping life easy. Advantage Broadcasting. Move ahead.